This lecture is part of Berkeley Math 115, an introductory undergraduate course on number theory, and will be about equivalence of binary quadratic forms ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared, where a, b, and c are integers. And the problem we want to solve is to find which integers n are represented by the form. Um, and we're going to take um, primitive representation, so x and y are co-prime. And we remember we had a sort of theorem about this last lecture, which says that n is representable by this form if and only, but by some form of this discriminant, if and only if um, d, which is the discriminant, is b squared minus 4ac, is a square mod 4n. So, so n is this for some form. Um, but the trouble, so if there were only one form of discriminant minus d, for instance, if d is minus 4, um, then the form x squared plus y squared is, is a positive definite form of that discriminant. Then we would find a theorem that says that um, um, n is equal to x squared plus y squared if and only if um, minus 4 is a square mod 4n, and that would be very useful if we take p to be a prime, for example, we see that p is equal to x squared plus y squared, if and only if minus 1 is a square mod p, which says that p equals 2, or one p is 1 mod 4. So that would give us a very nice condition, saying that a prime is a sum of two squares, um, if and only if it's 1 or 2 mod 4. But the problem is that this is not um, the unique form of discriminant minus 4. Um, in general, th th there are quite a lot of ways of changing a form to one of the same discriminants. So suppose we change x to x plus y, and we take a form ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared. Well, let's see what that becomes. That becomes ax plus y squared um, plus bx plus y times y plus c times y squared which is equal to ax squared plus 2a plus b xy plus a plus b plus c y squared. So what's the discriminant of this? Well, it's 2a plus b squared minus 4a a plus b plus c, which is equal to 4a squared plus 4ab plus b squared minus 4a squared minus 4ab minus 4ac, which is equal to b squared minus 4ac. So making this change of variable x goes to x plus y doesn't actually change the discriminant. So, for example, we can change x squared plus y squared to x squared plus 2xy plus 2y squared. And there are lots of other changes we can do. We can change x to x plus ny for any n, because that's just repeating this n times. Or we could swap x and y. And that obviously doesn't change the discriminant, because the form becomes cx squared plus bxy plus ax squared, or we could even change x to minus x. So there are quite a lot of things we can do to the form without changing its discriminant. Um, so um, more generally, we can um, make the following change of variables. We can change um, x to um, ax plus by and y to cx plus dy. So this is really just multiplying um, the vector xy by the matrix a, b, c, d. And we want this to have an inverse. Well, um, you can find the inverse of a matrix if its determinant is invertible. And here the determinant is a, d minus b, c. And we want this to be invertible. Well, well remember all our matrices are are integers, so we want this to be an integer with an inverse, so, so the condition is just ad minus bc equals plus or minus 1. And you can easily check this, because if if um, ad minus bc is plus or minus 1, then the inverse is going to be given by d minus c minus b a, and this will be equal to plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1, depending on what this sign is. Um, so if we make this change of variable with um, ad minus bc plus or minus 1, then um, 
we're not really going to change the form very much. It will obviously still represent the same numbers. So we say forms are called properly equivalent if um, we get AD minus BC equals plus 1 here and improperly equivalent if AD minus BC is equal to minus 1. Um, so um, this here we'd be taking two forms a1x squared plus b1xy plus c1y squared and we're just changing it to um, <coughs> a1x ax plus by squared plus b1 ax plus by cx plus dy plus c1 <coughs> um, c uh, x plus dy all squared, which is a little bit of a mess to write out. Um, and we can ask what happens to the discriminant if we make do this. And well, we could do this by brute force calculation, but it's a bit messy. So let's see if there's a slightly easier way of doing it. So we're changing x to ax plus by and y to cx plus dy. And you notice the form ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared can be written like this. You take a b over 2 b over 2 c and you multiply it by xy on the right and by the row matrix xy on the left. So um, this little 2 by 2 matrix here is really a way of representing this quadratic form as a matrix. Um, and now, if we're changing x, y to um, a, b, c, d times x, y, you see this is, this is this linear transformation. So we're changing the form to a, c, b over 2, b over 2. And then we put um, a, b, c, d, x, y here. And then we put x, y. And now we need to transpose this matrix because we're multiplying by x, y on the, on the right. So we get a, c, B, D. And now this is going to be the matrix of the new form. And we notice that the discriminant of this D is equal to the determinant of this matrix. So it's A, C minus B over 2 times B over minus B over 2, or, or rather um, the discriminant over 4 is equal to that. So in order to work out the discriminant of, of the new um, quadratic form, we've got to work out what is the determinant of this matrix. Well, the determinant is equal to the determinant of A, C, B, D times the determinant of A, B over 2, B over 2, C times the determinant of A, B, C, D. Well, that's easy because this is plus or minus 1, and this is also the same plus or minus 1, and this is just the discriminant over 4. So um, we see that the discriminant gets multiplied by the square of this determinant, which is 1, so the discriminant does not change um, if we um, change our quadratic form to an equivalent one. Um, so let's see a few examples of this. So suppose we take the form 4x squared plus xy plus 6y squared, and 4x squared minus xy plus 6y squared. So if we change x to minus x, we see that the forms are improperly equivalent. You notice this corresponds to the chain using the make this matrix to make the change of variables, which obviously has determinant equal to minus one. Um, these forms are not properly equivalent. Um, you can do this by brute force calculation, but I'm not going to do it now because later on we will have a much easier way of checking whether forms are properly equivalent. So forms, it is possible for forms to be improperly equivalent, but not properly equivalent. Um, now let's take a look at forms of discriminant minus 12. And we can write down two forms, at least, well, we can write down following two forms. And... 
you see they both have discriminant minus 12 and we can see that these are definitely not equivalent. And that's easy to see because this one here is always even, whatever x and y are. However, this one here is sometimes odd. We put x equals 1, y equals 0, this is odd. So these forms do not represent the same numbers, so they can't possibly be equivalent because equivalent forms have to represent the same numbers. Well, you may say we're cheating a little bit on this one because all the coefficients on this one are even, so somehow that, that forces all the values to be even. So, so can we find two non-equivalent forms of the same discriminant which don't have this property? And the answer is yes. If we take d equals minus 15, we can take the forms 2x squared plus xy plus 2y squared and x squared plus xy plus 4y squared. And these are again not equivalent. And in order to see they're not equivalent, we can just show they don't represent the same numbers. So for instance, this represents 1. We take x equals 1 and y equals 0. And this does not. And this takes this is a little bit harder to see, but you can see this by completing the square. So this becomes 2x plus y over 4 squared plus 15 over 8y squared, if I've calculated it right. And now this is a sum of two squares. So if it's 1, each of these must be at most 1. So, well, y must be 0, and then obviously there's the, the, there's no way of choosing x. So, so this one does not represent 1 for any integer values of x and y. So, so, so we definitely can sometimes get two inequivalent forms of the same discriminant. Um, um, so the problem we want to understand is um, classify forms of discriminant D up to equivalent or maybe proper equivalents. I mean, I'm not worrying too much about the difference between proper and in, improper equivalents just now. And suppose that all forms of discriminant D are equivalent. Um, actually, um, if the forms are definite, they're, they're almost never equivalent because they can be either positive definite or negative definite. So we would say all um, positive definite forms if we're if we're looking at definite forms. Um, then if ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared has discriminant b squared minus 4ac equals d, then this represents n if and only if um, D is a square mod 4n, because we showed earlier that D is a square modulo 4n if it's represented by some form of that discriminant. But if all the forms are equivalent, they all represent the same numbers. So, so any form must actually represent n. Um, so we have to ask, when is this condition satisfied? And this depends on d. There are some values of d when it is satisfied and some values of d when it isn't satisfied. So the problem is to um, try and understand um, equivalence classes of forms. So um, now we look at the following problem. Um, given a form ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared, can we find a simplest form equivalent to it? So is, is, is there a sort of best possible choice of, of an equivalence class of forms? Um, well, what do we mean by simplest? Well, first of all, Let's try to make A as small as possible. Um, that means uh, under equivalence, so we're allowed to change X to, 
to um, x and y to some linear combination of x and y. And if a is minimal, let's try to make b um, minimal, as small as possible. Um, so um, let, let, let's do this as an example. Suppose we've got a form 2x squared plus 10xy plus 13y squared. Well, let's try and adjust it to make a and b as small as possible. First of all, we can make b smaller by making the change of variable changing x to x plus 2y. So we can think of this as being 2 times x plus 2y squared um, plus 2 times x plus 2y times y plus y squared. And if we now make the change of variable, changing x to x plus 2y, we find this becomes 2x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Um, and now we can um, change x and minus y, and this becomes y squared minus 2xy um, plus 2x squared. You may, may ask, why don't we change x to y? Well, changing x to y is actually this matrix, which has determinant minus 1, so this would be an improper transformation, and improper transformations you should kind of avoid if possible. Um, so, um, sorry, if, um, that should be an x squared, and that should be a y squared. So, so now we've made a equal to 1, and now we can um, change x to x minus y, and this just becomes x minus y squared plus y squared, which now becomes x squared plus y squared if we change x to x plus y. So this form of discriminant um, what, minus 4 is actually equivalent to this form of discriminant minus 4, which we can find by, by trying to simplify it. And um, 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 if we use the two operations, x, we, we can swap x with minus y, or um, um, we can change um, x to x plus y. And, and let's see what this... Um, does um, well um, we, we say the form is reduced so, so this form is ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared so let's say it's reduced to mean um, that um, um, b is less than or equal to a in absolute value, and the absolute value of a is less than or equal to c, plus some other small conditions that I will um, mention a bit later. And the key point is that every form is equivalent to a reduced one. And um, that to show this, um, we can make a minimal and secondly we make b minimal uh, given the smallest value of a and let's check that a form with these two properties is actually reduced well first of all we must have a is less than or equal to c or else we can swap x and y in order to make so swapping x and y would make c less than or equal to a, so, so a wouldn't be minimal. And then we can change x to x plus ny, and by choosing n, we can choose n to make minus a is less than or equal to b is less than or equal to a. So the absolute value of b is then less than or equal to a. Um, I mentioned there are actually two other small conditions we can put in. If you look at this carefully, we can also see that um, if a equals c or a equals b, we can take 
B to be greater than or equal to zero. So the reduced form has this rather minor extra condition, but really you should forget about it. It's, it's not really all that important. The, the, this is the key condition of reduced forms. Um, so we've seen that every, every form is equivalent to a reduced form. And now we can see that there are only a finite number of reduced forms of a given value of the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. And to see this, first suppose the form is positive definite. Um, so that means a is greater than zero and c is greater than zero and d is less than zero. So we have b squared minus 4ac equals d less than zero. So 3a squared, which is equal to 4a squared minus a squared, is going to be less than or equal to 4ac minus b squared because um, here we're using the fact that b is less than or equal to a is less than or equal to c which is equal to minus d. So if we compare this, we have a bound on, on a. Um, a is less than or equal to the square root of minus d over 3. So there are only a finite number of values of a. And b has absolute value less than or equal to a, so a finite number number of values of b. And c is equal to um, um, minus d plus b squared over a, so c is now fixed. So there are only a finite number of values of a and only a finite number of values of b and only one, and given a and b there's only one value of c, so there are only a finite number of reduced forms. Um, so, um, um, so now what we want to do is, um, given a discriminant d, we want to um, classify these finite number of forms of discriminant d. And if we're really lucky, there will only be one reduced form of, uh, of one reduced form of um, discriminant d. And this will then show that all forms of discriminant d are equivalent because we've shown that every form is equivalent to a reduced one and there's only one reduced one and this will allow us to work out which primes are represented by the form and so on. So we're going to work out several examples of that next lecture.